we've made it. Week 14 of the NFL season. It is here. It has come to us all. It is now ready to go. We are ready to bake for another week of NFL action. And I don't know what kind of train wreck this game between the Steelers and the Vikings will be tomorrow. Uh, I, I can't even imagine you know what kind of game we're going to get because this is a Vikings team that has been very consistent and this is a Steelers team that has been very consistent so I don't know what we're getting from this I don't know what I don't know who who designed such a sick trick but that that's the beauty of Thursday night football just being beautifully disgusting Dalvin Cook might be coming back for for the Vikings in this game so that's that's good um we move into Sunday. The more intriguing stuff comes on Sunday and Monday night. Or rather, Sunday, the Sunday afternoon slate, not the Sunday night game. We'll talk about that. But the Monday night game, absolutely going to be intri beyond intriguing. Going to be a thriller, I think, in my opinion. But the Saints and the Jets kick us off on Sunday afternoon. Alvin Kamara should be coming back. You know, the Jets, you know, they fought hard this year. The Jets fought hard. Saints need a victory, though, to stay in the playoff hunt. They need a victory, and they, they gotta get it. Falcons and the Panthers also fighting in a muddled, mediocre NFC playoff pitcher fighting for that 6th and 7th seed because the 6th seed and the 7th seed are kind of two, are two teams that are on two different trajectories right now. We'll talk about those two teams in a moment here, but the Falcons and the Panthers, this one's going to be huge. I don't know what in the world the Panthers have been doing, because they were on a bye last week, and they, um, we all know they have impressed. We all know they haven't impressed us in the past few weeks, so the Falcons and the Falcons, they have just haven't been impressive at all. So I don't know what the game plan here is for Matt Rule and company. All I know is that Matt Ryan and company need a big victory. You know, both these teams do. Seahawks and the Texans. In fact, the Texans just actually got eliminated from playoff contention last week, which is weird because, you know, the Texans have two wins. The Lions are still technically in it, thanks to the, again, the wild, crazy, disgusting NFC playoff picture. Seahawks are trying to salvage their season. They could salvage their season you know, in some form by getting off on a winning streak and it doesn't and it doesn't get any better, you know, with uh, for the Texans. It just does not get any better for them. I, I expect another beatdown in H Town. <laughs> I expect another beatdown in H Town. That's pretty funny. Um Raiders Chiefs. I don't I don't know I don't know what kind of mind designed this game to be at the time slot it is. You know, similar to it and the Ravens Browns. The Reefs just saw the Ravens and the Browns two weeks ago, but the Browns were on a bye last week, so remember that. But we just saw the Ravens play some of the ugliest football games I think we've ever seen in our entire lives these past couple weeks. You know, and the Browns have had an ugly season. You know, a promising start marred by, you know, just complete incompetence. Same thing with the Raiders. A good, some good games in here, but just completely marred by a complete incompetence. You know, Patrick Mahomes and company said that, well, they, they said that, you know, well, at least Patrick Mahomes, he said he, he's not playing his best football. He, he knows he's not. But against the Raiders, you know, a couple weeks back, yeah, Chiefs looked like the Chiefs old again when they whipped up on the Raiders in Vegas. And they're at home this time against the Raiders. They're at home this time. I'll preview these two team two games in tandem because remember, there is a Saturday night game or rather a Saturday afternoon game involving the Raiders and the Browns next week. So, you know, or rather the week after. So there is going to be some intrigue there because if these two teams lose, I'm probably not even gonna pay attention to this game. Probably not. It's I've seen the Raiders and the Browns too many times this year to where, you know, they're too inconsistent. We know the Ravens play, you know, pretty bad football half the time, you know. I mean, they got Lamar Jackson and everything, but they, but everything else around them hasn't been, you know, the team 
that's gotten them to this point. That's why they're not in the first. That's why they're not the first seed in the AFC right now. That's why the Ravens aren't the number one seed. The Chiefs, we know, are existent. We know the Chiefs are existent. But when they play AFC West opponents, I don't think I don't think we've seen them against the Chargers yet. But when they play against the Raiders and the Broncos, they've owned them like like they should. And that's the Chiefs team that we need. The Raiders, yeah, or rather, that's the Chiefs team that they that. Chiefs fans need the Chiefs want them to that the Chiefs want themselves to be not what we need because I'm not a Chiefs fan <laughs> but the Raiders if they want to win this game they got to make they got to make the Chiefs be the Chiefs of this year not the Chiefs of you know the Super Bowl run Chiefs the Chiefs of this year which has been the inconsistent poor play poor play calls you know Patrick Holmes throwing it up and it getting intercepted, you know, that type of Chiefs game that we need. Big one in this time slot. Big big one for me because I got the shirt on that says it how about them Cowboys playing up against the Washington football team. I've seen the Raiders and the Chiefs already and I know it's gonna be rough. I've seen the Ravens and the Browns already and because of the AFC North we know that the AFC North games this year have been kind of either hit or miss. And hit, not in the way it's like a thriller, it's disgusting. And a miss being a blowout. So the Cowboys taking on the Washington football team in um, Landover, Maryland on Sunday afternoon. A big game here for the boys, you know, trying to stay in the lead of the NFC East because the NFC East has gotten a little bit tighter Thanks to the Eagles, you know, winning games. Thanks to Washington, you know, kind of reviving themselves under Taylor Heineke, you know, and this defense for Washington, which, remember, no Chase Young anymore. The ACL got him out for the year. So everybody else for the football team has been stepping up just when you need it to. The Cowboys defense has been stepping it up when they need to. Offense, on the other hand, of course, you know, you, you, you still got Dak. You still got a a Zeke that's you know he he does what he needs to do you know in the situations that requires him but it's been more so Tony Pollard the past few weeks and then you got obviously Gallup you know Lamb and Cooper you know those three guys you know guys like Michael Parsons have also been you know just on an absolute tear for the defense. For the Cowboys. Washington, I don't think I watched very much Washington football this year, aside from, you know, aside from earlier in the season, I think. So, this, again, this game is going to be huge. This is going to be huge for Taylor Heineke, for real. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. This is going to be huge for him. If he, went, if he comes out, you know, wins this game for the football team, that's going to be huge. Because, again, Cowboys are losing their lead in the NFC East. A lot of people expect them to just take the NFC East outright in like 10 weeks or so because, I mean, the way things were looking, it was not good. It was not good. And now things have tightened up a little bit, so the pressure is on. The pressure is on. Titans, on the other hand, they are still battling with injuries and stuff like that. I know it's the Jags, but, I mean, you can't... Can't overlook them. You can't overlook them at all. So Titans, they're back off their bye week. Um, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot of guys, you know, you know, coming back for both these teams. Titans just gotta win this game. That's all you gotta do. Stay, stay in the race for the double one seed. Just win this game. That's all you gotta do. Giants and Chargers is a game that's going to happen you know, as we move into the later games here. You know, the Giants Chargers is a game that's going to happen because I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what kind of Giants team we're going to get in this one. Mike Glennon's been injured. I'm not sure if Daniel Jones is coming back or rather it seems that Jake Fromm will be the guy for the Giants. Um we all know about this Chargers attack that's been playing, you know. Um, unfortunately, Keenan Allen is on the COVID list. So, again, you know, a lot of guys, again, the COVID list has claimed a lot of guys this year. So, we'll see, 
you know, how the Chargers can adjust to this, you know, if they can, if they can adjust, you know, they still got Mike Williams, still got, you know, Jalen Guyton, you know, Austin Eckler, I mean, just a talented Chargers team, but the Giants, we know they aren't a pushover, remember, they beat the Raiders earlier this year, we know they're not a pushover against the SAFC West team, so, Chargers be wary, and don't blow a lead again. Don't, don't do like last week, okay? Lions and the Broncos. Now, now this is a Broncos team that, again, like I said in my Week 13 recap, had it, had to make things crazy in the AFC West, and they completely failed to do that. This is a opportunity to get back into the win column, get back over 500, you know, stay in the playoff race, you know. But again, this is an Lions team that's not going to be easy. Uh, interesting QB battle between Jared Goff and Teddy Bridgewater. You know, two quarterbacks that you know a lot of people don't seem to get. But it's going to be it's going to be thrilling to see them nonetheless. You know, see how see how these two quarterbacks operate. Again, the Lions are riding high after beating the Vikings last week for their first win in nearly a year. You know, can they make it two in a row? We'll see. We will see. 49ers and Bengals have lost its luster a little bit. I thought we we all thought this game would be flexed to Sunday night. Unfortunately, the Bears and the Packers, and we all know the Bears have just been a mess this year. But the 49ers Bengals really should have been the Sunday night game. I don't know why, but it is what it is. It's too late to change it now. Um, and unfortunately, both these teams are coming off losses. So, yeah, um, it seems like. You know, it, it seems like there's going to be, you know, some interesting things going on in this game. You know, there's a lot of guys that are either injured, you know, might be coming back, you know, like Tico Samuel, D. Ford um, for the 49ers. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems like it seems like Joe Burrow might be out. I'm check, taking a look at something right now, actually. Um, it seems like. You know, um, okay, okay, he, he he'll play. Joe Burrow will probably play, but it's I don't know that report there made it seem, you know, kind of rough. I don't know what's going on with the frames here. Uh, there we go. I don't know what's going on with the frames. I thought something was wrong, but uh, you know, it seems like you know again. The Bengals and the 49ers, they're they're in they're in directions that you know need to change really quick because they're gonna be left behind if they continue to play like this. And remember what I said earlier about the NFC, you know, having a muddled playoff picture? The 49ers is is the reason why. It, it would be a little bit more clear if the 49ers just played, you know, consistently last week against the Seahawks. I don't know what Chibi G and company are doing out there, but they need to get it together real quick. This is a statement game right here. This is a statement game for both these teams. The Bengals win this game. They're still in the hunt for the AFC North because the AFC North has been, you know, crazy. Again, it's been a crazy season in the AFC North. 49ers, on the other hand, they're just trying to hang on to a playoff spot, they're hanging, they're hanging on by a thread, you know, and you can't, and you can't look behind you and, you know, worry about what's behind you, you gotta go with what's in front of you right now, and the Bengals are not gonna be easy, not gonna be easy, you might have to torch them a little bit with Debo Samuel, but it's not gonna be easy, because remember, Joe Burrow and company can fight back, they can fight back like they always do. The Bills of the Bucks have lost a little bit of their luster as well because Josh Allen and company have played pretty consistently. And, you know, again, there's been some injuries to the Bucks deep or rather to the Bills defense. We know the Bucks have had some secondary issues throughout the entire season, but that doesn't matter. When Godwin and Gronk have been tearing it up like it is, you know it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be a pretty time. And the Bucks have just looked like a, a Bucks team that you know can take it all away again. You know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just I'm just saying it. Like the Bucks are quietly, you know, they they're probably going to punch a playoff spot this week if they beat 
the Bills. And that's a that, that's not a big if anymore because again the Bills have played pretty inconsistent throughout the entire season too. So, um, yeah. Bears and Packers, like I said, I, I don't know why this is still a Sunday night game. It shouldn't be, but here we are. It is. I don't know why. Um, like the like the Bears, I I just don't know. I just really don't know. He, I, I think Justin Fields is coming back. It looks like he will be coming back. Aaron Rodgers is probably going to own the Bears like he usually does, and there there's just nothing for me to talk about here. Like. Again, this is just not a matchup I don't think people want to see on a Sunday night. I'm sorry. It's not. But this Monday night matchup? Oh, yes. The Rams and the Cardinals. Now, the Rams got whipped earlier in the season by the Cardinals. They got whipped really, really bad. And, you know, the Cards are tended to trying to hold on to the number one seed. They could do that by beating the Rams again. They have the cards have Kyler Murray back. They have a lot of pieces that have just been, you know, damn good. They're, they're, they're getting a lot of guys back. They're getting a lot of guys back. But Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup could be the X factor here for the Rams. You know, Rams rebuilt their defense, but it's not. It it, it worked against the Jags last week, but it hasn't worked when they played better teams than the Jags. You know. So this one's going to be really intriguing because if the Cardinals can torch this defense, and, you know, run all over this defense, we know what we know what Cliff Kingsbury's attack can do. It, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night for the Rams. And I mean, I'm sorry, you know, if if the Rams lose this game, they're losing a lot of traction here, you know, as one of the top teams in the NFC because I mean the NFC. It's kind of down this year. Remember, I've been saying that. The NFC has been kind of down, and it needs to get better. It needs to get better. And if the Rams lose this game, you know, they're losing position. You know, they're already, you know, what, the five, the, currently the five seed right now, I think. You know, they're, they're going to be losing positioning, you know, if they lose this game too. So, I, I, I honestly don't know how Week 14 will go because, as usual, the NFL completely surprises us each and every week. I, I just do not know. You know, it, it carried the chaos from college football carried over into the NFL this year because I just don't know how this week is going to go. Like I, I, I could see a lot of different things going and I, I just don't know. I really don't, man. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. But what I will say is I will see you all late Saturday night yeah yeah it should be about late Saturday night you know um, so it, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be really interesting to see you know how everything goes I think I just said that but I'll see you again I'll see you all late Saturday night talking college football and whatnot so we can go on with more college football content you know, and then Sunday, late Sunday night, it'll be like in between, you know, the games and stuff like that on Sunday night. Come back for some college basketball piece. We got to discuss some college basketball around here. Because um, it, it, it I, I just don't even know about college basketball <laughs> um, for, for this week either. Because this week has already been crazy with the way things have gone. So I'll see you all um, very, very soon with more content. Keep clicking, keep finding the videos, keep subscribing, and I'll, I'll see you soon.